George F. Sternberg, son of the great paleontologist Charles Sternberg. When he was only nine years old, George went exploring in Bear Creek one day and found the fossil of a plesiosaur. This moment marked the beginning of the biggest museum in Hayes, Kansas, Sternberg Museum of Natural History. After George discovered his first fossil, this inspired him to devote his life to hunting, collecting, and preparing fossils for museums. Carrying on, in 1902, the amazing Fort Hayes State University came to be. Back in the day, it used to be called Kansas State Normal University. Picking Hall in the library on this campus became the main spot where George would store his fossils and put them up on displays, making them mini-museums. As time went on, these two spots started to run out of room as George kept finding more and more fossils. Enter McCartney Hall. In 1915, this building was built to serve as both a library and a museum so it could store more fossils George found. George was to keep adding and maintaining this building because the college wanted him to. With the help of some college professors, they were able to develop the museum more by assembling more exhibits, research, and education. More and more people kept coming to check out this magnificent museum. You might recall seeing the famous fish within a fish in this museum that Sternberg had found in 1952. So the fish within a fish, or the gillicus inside of a xyphactinus, uh, which is what you see behind me, is the most photographed fish or fossil in the world, which is kind of cool. But how did it get here? Well, he was working for Fort Hayes, and he collected fossils to start a museum. But he also didn't get paid very much, so the university allowed him to go out and collect some fossils and sell them. And so he was on a pros prospecting trip for the American Museum of Natural History. And he found just the beginnings, the, the snout, the beginnings of the fish within a fish skull out in the field. And he brought uh, representatives from the American Museum out with him and said, look, here's a Zyphactinus. Would you like it? And they said, we've already got a Zyphactinus. Matter of fact, I think we have two. So you can go ahead and keep this one. And he said, oh, okay. So he was going to keep it for Fort Hayes, and he started excavating it out in the field, and as he got further along the skeleton, he started noticing that there was another fossil involved with the fish, and he found what looked like another fish inside of the Zyphactinus, and he said, you know what, I had originally promised this to the American Museum, and I had no idea that this could be a really spectacular fossil of very of a lot of significance. So he called them back up and said, hey, you might want to come back out and take a look because it looks like there is a fish inside of the Zyphactinus. Uh, and actually at the time, Zyphactinus was called Portheus. Name changes, very interesting. Um, and the American Museum said, well, that's pretty cool, but we gave you our word that you could keep it. We, we don't want to go back on our word, just like you didn't want to go back on your word. So they said, you can go ahead and extract the fossil and keep it for Fort Hayes. Sadly, George Sternberg passed away in 1969. After all he had done for the university and the museum, the Sternberg Geology Club petitioned the university to have the museum named after George, which so happened to be approved that the museum is now called Sternberg. As time went on, the university saw the museum as more of a tourist place for educational purposes. With even more specimens coming in and the museum being a flood area, the university sought to move the museum to a completely different area. In 1994, the Sternberg Museum of Natural History was built. It was open to the public for educational purposes and to show what all Sternberg had discovered. Even today, Sternberg has a lot to offer. Right now, one of Sternberg's most popular exhibits is the Rattlers. This exhibit is all about snakes and even shows you some to see all the interesting facts about them. So Rattlers is a very unique exhibit and it's really kind of cool and unique because it's the only exhibit in the country that has an example of every species of rattlesnake found in the United States. And it's kind of unique and cool and it was actually uh, brought up by our former uh, Zoology Collections Manager, Curtis Schmidt. Uh, Curtis, who passed away this last June, very sadly, but this is a legacy of his that we're still keeping up. And what he came up to me with is he said, 
you know, it'd be really cool to do an exhibit on rattlesnakes because rattlesnakes are really misunderstood and everybody hates rattlesnakes and they should because they're really cool animals and they're very important for ecosystems all over the country. And we'd already started a process of bringing live animals into the museum with our bringing fossils to life where we have tortoises and lizards and fish. And I said, that's a pretty cool idea. And we have this space in here that was used to be traveling exhibit space, but it's be perfect kind of dark, uh, beautiful area to have a rattlesnake exhibit. Another popular exhibit is the animatronic T-Rex with its amazing roar and realistic movement. So we're up at our dinosaur diorama with our T-Rex, who is notorious for scaring very small children um, and making everybody excited about moving dinosaurs. Our T-Rex um, was put into this museum in 1996, which was three years before the museum actually opened in 1999. And it was constructed sort of around the Jurassic Park time. So the dinosaurs was a really big theme. And there was a company that built the T-Rex. We had an accurate size for a female T-Rex. Um, so they put it together, but a lot of animatronics was very early stages. So they just made it so that the, the neck and the mouth could move. Um, recorded a lot of different noises to try to come up with what a T-Rex might sound like. So it's already been here for almost uh, 20, well, we're getting close to 25 years. So it's been around for a long time, it's a staple. It died once with the jaws falling apart and we had to take it apart. It took nine months to put it back together and people were not happy because this is a staple that everybody wants to see at the museum. As of June 2022, Sternberg and Defiance Brewing Company have set out to collaborate. Sternberg had just recently celebrated 70 years of the fish within a fish. With this great achievement, Defiance created Gillicus Island, named after this significant fossil. So the Sternberg Museum last year was able to partner with the local brewing company, Defiance Brewing, um, and we came up with a collaboration beer and um, that was also spearheaded by our previous zoological collection manager, Curtis Schmidt. And um, I actually came up with the name for it, not to like brag or anything, um, but we wanted something that was fun and it was gonna be in the summer. So we wanted something kind of like, you know, tropical summer fun, but we also wanted to make sure it tied back to the museum. And so we've always had a joke about the smaller fish within the fish within the fish being called like Gilligan's Island. Everyone kind of thinks about Gilligan's Island. And so that was sort of the, like the name that um, everyone just seemed to like was Gilligan's Island. And so um, it was also in uh, the same time as the 70th anniversary of the, the discovery of the fish within the fish. And so we thought, what better way to celebrate <laughs> with the fossils finding with, with a glass of beer. So that's what we did. In September of 2022, Sternberg created Grandeur in This View, an exhibit by Dr. Laura E. Wilson. This exhibit shows how we can view life through a microscope. By looking into microscopes, we can see bones and teeth. Changes in lighting and magnification in the application of filters. In November of 2022, a new fossil was discovered by paleontologists Bruce A. Shoemaker and Michael J. Everhart. Adjunct curators for the Sternberg Museum of Natural History went back to examine an old fossil, well, elasimosaurid specimen. What they found was a whole new species of elasimosaur. Back in 1931, Sternberg had discovered the fossil but never really inspected it enough. Until recently, Looking at the bone structure, it didn't really match the species of an elasimosaur. With their new find, they named this new species Polisio elasiomosaurus walkeri. You can check out Shoemaker and Everhart's papers about this awesome discovery in Transactions of the Kansas Academy of Science Journal. Okay, so... The exhibits that we plan on getting this year is um, usually, we usually have a spring exhibit. However, we did not have anything booked for this year. So we're actually uh, replacing with one of our original exhibits called A Look, a Look Inside. And 
um, that was produced in-house by our previous zoological collections manager, Curtis Schmidt. Um, it features about like 60-ish pictures of x-rays of skulls that we have within our zo zoological collection, as well as a few specimens that are kept in our wet collections, which means they're kept in jars and alcohol. And um, it's very interesting. You get to see like the whole skeleton or like the skull of an animal. I think one of my favorite photographs is the beaver because you can see the, their, how, how uh, big their teeth are and everything. I just thought that was insane. Um, so for our summer exhibits, we are getting an exhibit in about tarantulas. It's going to feature uh, several different species of live tarantulas and um, one of their biggest species they're going to have is called a goliath bird eater and it's big enough to eat a bird. It's very crazy. So the future for the Sternberg Museum for expanding, um, we're currently not going to do any physical expansion but we have had some projects of starting to produce in-house exhibits that are meant to be for traveling. So um, a look inside is one of them that's going to be featured. And we currently have an exhibit up about histology, which is um, cutting open bones, including fossil bones, and examining the um, data that you can gather from the bones. So growth and um, aging and health conditions you can all collect from histology. So that is an exhibit. And then the other two that are still in production is one is about Kansas symbols. And so we're going to talk all about Kansas symbols and why we have those and um, why they're important to the state. And then we have another one that's talking about um, like mythical animals to actual animals. So when people discovered fossil bones and they did not understand what they were, they thought they were dragons or sea monsters. And so we kind of later go into from imagination to actual facts. So that's kind of it. Sternberg is full of history, education, and fun. There are plenty of unique things to check out and it's overall a fantastic experience. Thanks for watching and learning about the Sternberg Museum of Natural History.